Hey YouTube, welcome to TC10, the crazy troll nation of YouTube. The crazy, just because I am sometimes, and it's not even intentional, I'm just like a little off at times. Um, <laughs> and when I realize I say something off, or if I babble, or if I lose my train of thought, or whatever, I'll be like, welcome to the crazy. So there are times I do realize that I'm a little off. And troll, because I consider myself a troll, a cute troll, but a troll nonetheless. And I'm looking at my under eyes right now, and I'm thinking that butter... Fenty setting powder is not the right thing for me to put under my eyes. Anyway, as this video is titled, um, yeah, like in the mirror down here, it looks nice. But looking in the camera, it looks too highlighted under here for my liking. Anyway, this video is about, I am not a minimalist. However, I do have minimalism tendencies, I guess, according to some people. While I am talking, I'm going to um, do my eyes. Um, this is not a get ready with me because I just got home. I was away for the weekend. I volunteered. Well, not volunteered because I'm one of the staff members. Um, I work Friday at Baltimore Playhouse and I did a, a short shift today. So I just got home like 10 minutes ago. A little bit wired on Mountain Dew. So I'm like, I'll just knock out a couple videos. And then by then I should be ready to pass out because I am like really tired, but my brain is like, hey, what's up? And I'm just like, no, no, mm -mm. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to use the Viseart Natural Matte Milieu palette and I will try not to blind you. And so I think I'm going to do this column right here. So I'm going to do um, crease color, deep in the crease and lid. So I'm just going to keep it really simple. And so I was looking, I do look at some videos um, of people who are minimalists and I realize I do quite a few of their things, but not because I want to have that title or to label myself as that. What happened was um, about two and a half years ago, my mother needed to go into a nursing home. She has dementia and she signed for me to be her power of attorney over her finances and her medical stuff. And I had to clear out her apartment and she had a small apartment, but she had just like a lot of stuff. And I realized that even if something is sentimental to us, it doesn't necessarily mean it's sentimental to someone else. And on top of grieving her, even though she didn't pass away, I had lost a mother that I knew. She's never going to be who she was. And I didn't even realize till like six months that I was grieving. Cause I'm like, why am I having like all these different emotions and different feelings? And I realized, oh my gosh, I'm grieving. Like she's still alive, but I'm grieving because who she is is no longer here. And it was a very emotional process cleaning out her apartment. And it, it was just horrible. <laughs> And I was thinking, I wouldn't wish this on anybody. And a lot of stuff was just, it, well, honestly, it was just trash. Um, and it made me start to look at my life. This is this top color right here. That does not look that yellow in person. Um, it made me start thinking about, you know, my belongings and the thing things that I have and you know, is this going to be a value to someone else? And if not, why is it so valuable to me right now? And I mean, yeah, we have artwork on the walls and, you know, we have, you know, we all have our things. Some people collect shoes. I used to be a coach girl. The last couple of years I've been selling my coach bags, the ones that I haven't been using because I haven't been working. Um, and so it's like I had a lot of stuff that just did not serve a purpose for me anymore. And even though it was painful to get rid of some of my coach bags, I still did. And like other stuff I would get rid of. Um, I'm always just getting rid of stuff. Um, someone I knew was like, do you even have anything? Because like every few months you're like getting rid of stuff. And I'm like, you wouldn't believe how much stuff I still have. Um, so that's been the last two years. Like every maybe like five or six months or sooner, you know, I'll look at what I have and decide what I'm going to get rid of <laughs> and it's a good feeling um but prior to the last couple years that I've been doing this I literally just like did this and the brush hit across my contact lens <laughs> 
least it's a powder and not a liquid product because then I would have ruined my lenses. So now I'm going to take this middle shade here. Um, okay, what was I saying? Oh, even prior to having to clean out my mother's apartment, when I was working, I did have a lot of clothes. Um, we couldn't wear jeans. So it was like, you know, casual wear or khakis. When I worked in a prison environment, we had to wear like rubber sole shoes. And so I had to buy like special shoes or just, you know, special footwear or special types of boots. Um, and, you know, I bought, you know, a couple coats because walking through some of the correctional facilities, if it's like a campus type setup, you're out in the elements and in the wintertime it's cold. And so I had, you know, more coats and I had more hats. I had umbrellas, scarves, and just like a whole bunch of stuff. And when I retired, I'm like, okay, I got like a lot of stuff. And prior to that, I know I keep going back in time. <laughs> prior to all of that, um, before my second marriage, um, I wanted to be more feminine. And so I started, <laughs> for whatever reason, like I was like in my 30s, maybe it was a, a premature midlife crisis. So I, I said to myself, okay, let me just try and be more girly, be more feminine. And so I started buying dresses and skirts and blouses because I'm a je jeans and t-shirts, you know, type of person. I, I've always have been. I've always been a tomboy. Um, me and one of my male cousins, we were running around and playing in the woods down at my great grandmother's house. Like I was just always, you know, that, that girl that was one of the guys. And so I went out and I was buying, I went to the dress bar and bought a bunch of skirts and blouses and dresses and bought some shoes and some heels and it was not me at all it, it lasted maybe a few years but um <laughs> so i had like all this stuff and i'm just like it's just taking up space you know what i mean and the older i get the more important it is for me just to be comfortable and so i developed this mindset of number one getting if i don't if i don't wear something for two seasons which is essentially essentially two years if i don't wear something for two seasons if I don't wear something for two summers in a row, if I don't wear something for two fall seasons in a row or two winters in a row, I would get rid of it. Because if I haven't worn it in two years, I'm not gonna wear it. And so I got rid of a lot of stuff that way. And I had a problem with, <laughs> I broke a toe on one of my feet and it hit, the bone didn't heal correctly. And so I have issues wearing heels, or even if I'm walking up and down steps a lot, my foot swells up. And so I don't wear I don't wear heels anymore. Not even like boots. I can't even really wear wedges anymore, even though they are more comfortable than regular heels. And I tried to hang on to my platform shoes because they were comfortable for a while, but then after a while they weren't. And so I got rid of my shoes. I got rid of. I think I do have like two pair of boots left. Like I'm just like holding on, and I don't know. I don't know why. Um. And so, yeah, if I don't wear something for two seasons, I get rid of it. And even sometimes it's painful. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? If, if I can find this a happy home, and then I'm going to take this color down here. If I can find this item a happy home, you know, I do. And I know women who, you know, they, they work with homeless shelters. Um, there's a woman I know that she collects clothes for women transitioning from recovery back into the workforce and so they don't have you know casual or business attire um and so i find people or just happen to come across people <laughs> who i think are serving a good purpose you know helping others i really don't like to take things to goodwill and i know they have an overhead but my mindset is kind of like well not kind of it actually is this way where if I'm giving you something for free, why are you selling it? Again, I understand they have an overhead, you know, they pay their staff and you know, they have to pay their rent for the building, their utilities and things, and so I get it, but I would just rather give something away to someone that I know they're going to like it and appreciate it. Not saying if you shop at a thrift store, you're not gonna appreciate what you have, um, but I also know people who just shop at the thrift stores because they just like to shop. And so they they just hoard clothes and they shop at the thrift stores because it's cheaper than, you know, buying a bunch of clothes every other month at a department store or something like that. And so I like giving items a happy home. And so my first thing is if I have something to give away, I'll think about the sizes and shapes of people I know <laughs> to figure out, okay, would this fit them? 
And if I think it would, I'll ask if they would like it. And if they say no, then I'll say, well, does anybody you know, you know, would like this? And so I just go from there and give stuff away. And so that's how I do that. Um, housewares, um, the last year or so, I've gotten into pottery. <laughs> I'm going to take this color over here in the corner just to uh, blend this a little bit. The last year and a half or so, I've gotten into pottery. And so when I buy mugs or cups or teacups or bowls, I get rid of something that's currently in my kitchen cabinet. If it doesn't fit in the cabinet, well, not the pottery, so I'm not getting rid of the pottery. <laughs> but if I buy new pottery and all of my cups and mugs and bowls don't fit, in that cabinet i'll look at okay what can i give away that everything i want to have in here will fit in here and so i don't have an overflow of items what i have is what i use and i'm thinking now that there's some mugs and cups that i haven't used in a long time that i could get rid of that i probably should get rid of i'm going to go back in with this middle shade and so you know, keeping things that I enjoy, keeping things that I use is one of the minimalism mindsets. Keep things that bring you joy and get rid of things that don't or things that are not really serving a purpose for you. I've recently even gotten rid of some pictures on my wall that I've had for probably at least 25 years. And I'm like, you know, I've been looking at these pictures for 25 years. They were really nice pictures. But I'm like, if somebody else can have them and appreciate them a little bit more than I appreciate them right now... <laughs> And I did find a home for them, so I was really excited. And so, and there's another picture I keep looking at, and I'm, I have a person in mind to ask if they want it. And so I'm not afraid to get rid of stuff. It's, it doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, I need to have every wall covered, you know, with something. Um, I just got rid of uh, one of my dressers in my room because I, I condensed my drawer space and I'm like, I have this dresser here that I don't need. <laughs> and that dresser cost me some money. So I gave that away. And so that's where I'm at. I just, if I don't wear something for two seasons, I give it away. If I buy something, I get rid of two of the same items. I recently ordered um, a pair of um, a pair of boots, a pair of Doc Martens. And I already have two pair of boots I currently have in mind that I'm going to give away. And so that's how I do things. And just to not be spendful. Also, I wanted to talk about makeup. If I don't buy things with the intention of returning it, and I know some people are, some people say, oh, well, buying something and then returning it, it just creates waste because when you return it, they throw it away. And my thing is, number one, I don't buy things with the intent to return it. And number two, if something doesn't work for me or if I'm not loving it, Either I'm going to send it back and get my money back and they're going to trash it. Or I don't get my money back and I trash it. I'd rather have my money back. And also that's why companies and stores have return policies because everything doesn't work for everybody. I'm not a huge influencer. I'm not a, even a huge YouTube channel. I'm not a beauty guru. I don't buy things just to review things. And I don't think it's a waste of money for those who do buy things to review it because they're getting monetized and they're earning money from us watching their videos. And so if a bunch of people are saying, oh, can you review this item? Then maybe they should because the people who are watching are paying <laughs> for them to buy that product, basically. Like it's not, even though it's money out of their pocket, it's money that they earned from doing videos in the first place. And so to me, that's different than, even though people will say YouTube is a job, that's different than, you know, when I was working and I physically, well, still physically, I don't want to say physically earning a paycheck because YouTube is, is a business and for the larger channels, you know, it is their business. So it's sort of like in my mind, they are getting paid to buy product, to do reviews. Or if they're getting stuff for free, then this is not even an issue as far as trying to return things. But... That's where I'm at with all of this, and let me let me know, guys, what your strategies are, whether you're a minimalist or not. Like, what are some things that you do? Like, do you just continue to purchase things? Do you purchase and get rid of something of the same sort? 
Also, over the winter, I purchased, uh, <laughs> I went goose down jacket crazy. I bought three, two without a hood and one with a hood. Um, the two without a hood are 650 down. The one with the hood is an 850 down. And so I got rid of like four coats and three vests that I had in my closet. And the person I gave them to was like, oh my gosh, you're giving away all this stuff. I'm like, yep. And so <laughs> what are some things that you guys do to just keep your, your belongings under control? Or do you not? Or do you just continue to just purchase things and just have things around? Or um, are you trying to be or learning to be more intentional with your purchases? So that's the question. And I'm just trying, I'm just babbling right now to get through this video because I'm almost done my face. <laughs> and my next video that's going to upload will be my entire makeup collection. And some of you will be like, that's your entire collection? Like that little bit of stuff? Yeah. Yes, it is. And so... I'm going to finish this eye and in this video, I guess I can just end it right now. Okay, well, thanks guys for watching. <laughs> Leave your comments below. Are you a minimalist? Are you not a minimalist? Are you um, trying to incorporate some minimalist strategies into your belongings to have less belongings? Or do you just think it's all just just garbage and that people are just making up a term and just trying to have something to say so what's your take on it so those are the questions and so thanks guys for watching and you'll see me in the next video bye